say good afternoon everybody welcome everybody here to the house of Jacob we are going to deal well I'll title the lesson the Prince of Peace coming to overthrow the nations by war you know ultimately there will be peace on this earth you wouldn't think so looking at the way things are today because the world seems to be headed in the other direction. And it really is. But uh, there will ultimately be peace on this earth. And the one that's going to bring peace, that is the Lord. That is who the Prince of Peace is. We're going to show you that. But in order for there to be peace, the Lord is going to have to overthrow the nations by war. Because the nations, uh, the Lord is going to rule over this earth. The Lord is going to establish his government on this earth. And he's going to rule over all the nations on the earth. And none of these nations going to just hand this earth over to the Lord. The Lord is going to have to invade this earth with his troops. And he's going to have to overthrow the nations. So in order for there to be ultimate peace, as the Bible spoke of, then there must be war. Now, we have wars going on today. And all of these wars are leading up to the ultimate war. In other words, the war to end all wars. You know, that World War, I think it was World War I, was supposed to have been the war to end all wars. Then you turn around and had World War II. And so, and now you've had, I don't know how many wars since then. Because man cannot bring peace, people. You know, I don't care what his intentions are, he cannot bring peace. That has been proven. You know, every generation there has been wars. But the only thing is, in this last generation, there has been an escalation of wars. You know, a time like never before or never will be again. So man has shown down through the generation that he cannot bring peace. And you have some that even teach. You know, the Bible talks, I believe it's in um, Isaiah chapter 2, where nations going to uh, lay down their swords and their weapons, and nations are not going to learn war against nation anymore. Now, you have some people that teach that man is going to bring that about. But if man was going to bring it about, he, he's surely not going in the right direction because he's going totally in the opposite direction. Man is leading us to the total annihilation of the whole human race. That is where man will take us to. So man is not going to bring this peace. The Lord is going to bring this peace. The Prince of Peace, that is who's going to bring this peace. We're going to start this lesson out in Isaiah chapter 9. And we're going to begin reading at verse uh, 6. Isaiah 9. And we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Man, and we will begin reading at verse 6. You know, I look at what's going on in the world today, and I see everything is in place. Everything is where it's supposed to be. Everything is happening as it is supposed to happen. So I know that we are living in the days that Jesus spoke about in the 24th chapter of Matthew, which we're going to read a little bit of that a little later in this lesson. But everything is in perfect order. There is nothing out of place. What man is doing are the exact things that man is supposed to be doing in this generation. And the things that are going on in this world today are the exact things that are supposed to be going on in this world today. You know, I look at what, what uh, man like to call natural disasters or mother nature about whatever term he choose to use. Uh, these things that are happening that he calls mother nature are the things that the Lord had pronounced upon this earth to be happening in this generation. So everything is, is happening just as, as it is supposed to happen. Let's start reading here at Isaiah chapter 9. We're going to begin reading at verse 6. Because, you know, before we have this ultimate peace, then we got to have all these other things that must happen. You know, it would be nice if, you know, everything was just going along as is, and then all of a sudden the Lord would just come and change everything, and everything would just be fine, because that is how man kind of look at it, you know, as though the Lord going to just pop up one day, and he's going to save everybody and, and take everybody to heaven, and we're going to all mm -hmm. live up there, and we're going to all just be wonderful and happy. But that is not how it's going to happen. So, you know, we're going to just uh, go through some of the things that the Lord had pronounced upon this earth before he does bring this ultimate peace that the Bible speaks of. Let's start reading at Isaiah chapter 9. And we'll begin reading at verse 6. Isaiah 9, pick it up at 6. Go ahead and read, brother. For unto us a child is born, uh -huh. unto uh -huh. us a son is given, 
and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, mm -hmm. Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And his name will be called, what we are dealing with today, his name will be called the Prince of Peace because he is the one that's going to bring peace and there will be no peace until he brings this peace. But read that next verse. Of the, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Now once he established this peace on this earth of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. In other words, once he established his government on this earth, that government is going to stand forever and of peace there will be no end. Go ahead and finish that verse up. Upon the throne of David uh -huh. and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 30, just so we'll be clear as to who this is that's going to bring this peace. Once he establishes his government on this earth, it said, and of peace there will be no end. But until he establishes a government, there will be no peace. Let's start reading here at uh, Luke chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 30, because, man, you know, they always involved in war and they always sit down and they sign peace treaties and all of that. And before the ink can drown the peace treaty good, they at war again. I just look at what's been going on just in my generation. Just what I witnessed and just what I read about in history. Man, have always had war and he've always signed peace treaties. And all, every one that they've signed have always been broken. So. Because man cannot do it, it's going to take the Lord to do it. Let's start reading at Luke chapter 1. We'll pick it up at verse 30. Luke 1, and we'll begin reading at verse 30. Go ahead and read, brother. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Uh -huh. And behold, thou shalt be conceive in thy womb, and, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. Uh -huh. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now remember, this is Jesus that you're reading about, and it's the one that's going to sit on David's throne. That is the one that's going to bring the peace. And it said once he established this peace on the earth, of peace there will be no end. Go ahead and finish that next verse up. Verse 33. Go ahead. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, uh -huh. and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, let's go over to uh, Matthew chapter 2, and we'll begin reading that verse 1. Matthew 2, and we will pick it up at verse 1, 2 and 1. You know, this is dealing uh, here with the birth of Jesus, but uh, it's going to let you know here that, you know, Jesus is the king of the Jews. We understand that he's going to be king over all of the earth as well. But he also is considered as king of the Jews because actually he was the first king that Israel had. Let's start reading here at uh, Matthew chapter 2 and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Matthew 2 and begin at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, uh -huh. behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. So they understand that there would be a king of the Jews that would be born of a woman. Yes, you know, just like we read over in Isaiah, because they understood from prophecy what, what, what was to happen. So now, you know, and then they came asking, where is he that is king of the Jews? Go ahead and read on. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Because Herod <laughs> thought he was king of the Jews. He, he, in a sense, he was, but in another sense, no, he was not. That's right. So now he wanted to know, now, who is this king of the Jews here? Go ahead and read on. Verse 4. Uh -huh. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Read. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Uh -huh. And the prophet Micah, he is the one that wrote it, which we're going to read a little bit of that later. Go ahead and read on. And thou, Bethlehem, uh -huh. in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Now, let's go over to uh, John. We're going to go to John chapter 18, and we'll begin reading at verse 33, because I'm going to show you what, uh, what, uh, uh, when, uh, what Jesus said when uh, uh, Pilate asked him, you know, was he the king of the Jews? Let me show you what he said here. Let's start reading here at John chapter 18, and we'll begin reading at verse 33. John 18, and we'll begin.